Shalom. Today we're continuing the understanding Hebrew verb structure presentation. We remember that the verb conjugation tells us the tense, the person, and the binyan. We've been working in the participle tense, which has all these meanings in Hebrew. I do, I am doing, I have been doing, or I am the person that does that thing. Today we're going to cover the last of the seven binyanim, which is the nifal. You see highlighted there in gold. Remember that the participle has four forms, a masculine singular, a feminine singular, a masculine plural, and a feminine plural. The nifal is a passive form. This means that the subject of the sentence receives the action. The ball was thrown by me. The book was written by him. We're going to examine this root, shin bet resh, which means in the pa'al form, to break. In the nifal form, it means that something is being broken. And this is the normal conjugation for a complete root. The masculine singular is nishbar. The feminine singular in uh, modern Hebrew is always nishberet, but it can appear as nishbara in Tanakh. The plural form is nishbarim and nishbarot. So we see that the participle form will always begin with nun in the nifal. Here are some examples from Psalm 51. We see zivchei Elohim, the sacrifices for Elohim, ruach nishbara, a broken spirit, lev nishbar, a broken heart. In Jeremiah 2, 13, we see that uh, the prophet is warning the people from God that they have done two things which uh, he does not approve of. They have left the makor chayim chayim, the well of living water, and they have dug for themselves baorot, wells, baorot nishbarim, wells that are broken. They will not hold water. In this verse we see the nishbarit in the more traditional form. Here in Zechariah 11, we see that uh, God is talking about raising up a shepherd, but he will be an evil shepherd, and he will not, he will not look for those who are cut off. He will not seek the young. And also, hanishbarit lo hirape, he will not heal the one who is broken. We do have a few examples of the... Uh, these irregular forms. The root shin bet ayin is a particular form as it appears in nifal. It means to take an oath or to be under an oath. There are several verbs in nifal which we would not understand to have a passive meaning, but they always appear in, in the nifal. And to swear, lehishavea is one of those verbs. In Zechariah 5, where it's talking about the flying scroll, and it talks about all of those who swear, whoever is uh, swearing by it will be like her. In Amos 8, again, the people who are swearing, remember that the participle can be the people, those who are swearing by the shame of Samaria. So we see it looks like quite a normal plural form, nishba'im. Here's a feminine plural, nishba'ot lehovat svaot, the ones who are swearing. It's female, it's talking about cities. Remember, cities are always feminine. They are swearing to Yehovah of hosts. Here's a form which ends in hey. It was a little difficult to find the different genders to see, to see if we can find how the verb ending in hey functions in every gender. But in Esther 9, we see the na'asim b'chol dor b'dor, talking about that the holiday will be remembered and done by everyone in every generation. So just as in other verbs that end with hey, in the plurals, the hay drops out for na'asim, and also in Ezekiel 9, the na'asot, talking about the to'evot, the abominations which are done in her midst. So 
this is definitely a passive form. The Toevot aren't doing anything. Uh, in the Esther, the Yamim, the days are not doing anything. The days are being observed. The Toevot uh, are being done. But the form of the verb looks quite normal for a verb that ends in hey. Another verb that consistently appears in Nifal is something we would not consider to be passive. Uh, from this verb, lachem, which means to fight. You know the word milchama is a war. Uh, the fighting always appears in the Nifal. Here are some examples in Jeremiah 21. Here is Nebuchadnezzar, Melech Bavel, Nilcham Alenu. The king of uh, Babylon is fighting against us. In Joshua 10.25, here's a plural form. Atem, nilchamim, atam. You are fighting them. We have to remember that not every verb root will appear in every binyan. And most of the times we can understand the meaning as it moves from binyan to binyan. But sometimes there's just not any regularity to that. There's no way that, that we can understand why is fighting in passive. Uh, it is interesting that the, that the root for fighting and war comes from the word lechem, which means bread. We think about the people are fighting over land so that they can raise food, and I believe that's the connection. There's another form that you will see, which is called the passive participle, and it is somewhat different from the nifal form, even though both forms are passive. In the passive participle, we would have to think of it more in English as an adjective. In other words, if we look at the shavur, the broken, the nishbar, we would think, well, that thing is being broken. But in English, uh, if we have a broken window, then we might use this passive participle. It does not have a name that corresponds to the other binyanim. So this conjugation looks like this. The masculine singular is shavur. And you're probably starting to notice now between the pu'al and the hofal that uh, a lot of times these passive forms are going to have an u, a, sh a shiruk kind of sound. So shavur is something that is broken. Shavura is for the feminine, takes a feminine ending. Shavurim, shavurot, you can recognize these endings. So let's just say, for example, maybe you are in the midst of a bicycle accident and you fall off your bicycle and you realize that your leg is broken. At that moment, in the midst of it, you might use the nifal. My leg is broken. Regel, of course, is feminine, it would be nishberet. But once a leg is broken, and it's been broken for a while, maybe now it's been going on for a little while, or you're wearing a cast, and people say, what happens? And you say, my leg is broken, then you might more likely use this shavur, shavura, this, pa uh, this passive participle. In the Vegas 22.22, it's talking about the qualifications for the priests, and there's certain things that they cannot, you know, be a hunchback or blind or, and the word shavur appears there, something about them is considered to be broken. We have a better set of examples going through the genders uh, using the, the root uh, kotev to write. This is talking about something which is written. When God is talking about the curses and the blessing, he says all the diseases and smitings which are not written in this book of the Torah. Lo katuv, it is not written. In Deuteronomy 29, we see the feminine form, which is talking about the curse. The Allah is feminine, and so the adjective haktuva, the curse which is written in this book. This is actually where your word ketubah comes from. The marriage contract is just named for something which is written down. Here is a plural form in Deuteronomy 28, talking about all the words, called Devrei HaTorah Hazot, all the words of this Torah, HaKetufim Basefer Hazet, which are written in this book. And here's a feminine form. You can recognize it again in Second Chronicles 34. It's the plural of curse, alot 
Hakatuvot, the ones which are written. Uh, one anomaly that takes place when you have a verb uh, in this form, and that verb ends in hey, then uh, the hey is replaced by a yud. So we're looking at the verb asa, ayin, sin, hey. When it comes into this passive participle, it turns into asui. And that's how that is pronounced. That's shirik with the u after it, asui. In Ezekiel 40, it's talking about the floor, ritzpa, asui, lechetzer, saviv, saviv. Talking about the floor of the courtyard and how it is made. It's a, it's a passive form. The floor isn't doing anything. The floor is being made, or that is how it was made. In Nehemiah 3, it's talking about a brecha, a pool, and how it is made. Asuya is the adjective. It follows a normal adjective form, but instead of the hey, we have that yud. Here is a Plural form appearing in 2 Kings 23, talking about bringing out all the kelim, all the implements, ha-asuyim, that are made, le-ba'al, for ba'al, for false gods. First, in 1 Samuel 25, talking about Abigail and how she prepares the food for David because she realizes that her husband is doing something very foolish, and it talks about the things that she's bringing. And she, and she hurries up, and she brings uh, 200 loaves of bread and two wineskins. And then it says chamesh son. Son is a collective noun for sheep. She's bringing five of them. It's feminine. You see it's a katif kri, and so what is written uh, in in your printed Bible, has no vowels, and then the correction appears, it's asu yot. They're already dressed, they're already made and ready to, to go. This should be the end of the binyanim, but there are some things that we skipped over and I said we'd come back to, and these are the verbs that are halo and pl, and also they appear in pitpal, pitpal the same way, with the same problems. So uh, I will do a special presentation covering those forms um, in the participle and then hopefully beyond hope we can move on to the perfect tense. So while you're studying I pray that Yehovah would open the eyes of your heart and enlighten you to his word and remember always to simita inayim al keep your eye on the sky your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.